Hey guys, Jacqueline here and welcome to part 6 of how to make a 2D RPG in Unity. In this video, we'll be designing our farm layout, implementing it into the engine, and adding collision to our level. Before we head to Unity, we need to figure out what our farm layout is going to look like. Let's start by drawing our level out on a piece of paper. As you begin, think about where you'll put the house, road, crops, and water source. Pause the video here and spend 5-10 to 10 minutes drawing a quick initial level layout. Great job! This is the level that I will be creating. I included the house, road, water source, and room for crops. I also added some hills and cliffs to make the level more interesting to look at. Let's open Unity and get started putting our new level into the game. Click on the player game object in the hierarchy and add a box collider 2D to it. We'll edit the collider to fit over our sprite. You can click and drag to resize the collider. Now that our collider is taken care of, we can also add a rigid body. The rigid body allows us to have physics in the game and is required for detecting collisions between our game objects. Make sure that you change the gravity scale to zero so that our player doesn't fall off the world. Let's create a new tile map. A tile map is a component that stores and handles 2D tiles to create 2D levels in Unity. When we create a tile map, you'll see a new game object appear in the hierarchy named Grid. This object has a child named Tile Map. Rename the tile map to background. This is our first layer of tiles. The purpose of this layer is to make sure that we don't have any gaps or holes in the level. We will be creating another layer to go over this one that will use tiles that have transparent parts to them. So this layer is going to make sure that everything looks good and coherent. Duplicate the background tile map and name the new one ground. This tile map is going to be all of our terrain features of the ground. So all of our paths and our cliffs will go on this layer. Next, let's open our tile palette. In your scene tab, click the button on the bottom right corner that says open tile palette. This will open a tile palette window for you. I'm going to dock mine next to my inspector for easy access. Now that we have our tile palette open, let's create a new tile palette. Click on the create new tile palette button. I'm going to name my palette background tiles and then click create. This will open an explorer window and ask you where you want to save it. I'll create a new folder called tile palettes in the sprites folder and save it there. Before we can continue on our new tile palette, we'll need sprites to make it up. So let's import our background tiles now. In the sprite folder, right click and select import new asset. Navigate to where you saved your background tiles and then select all of the tiles or your sprite sheet and click import. Once our tiles are imported, we'll need to set them up in the inspector. I'm going to change my sprite mode to multiple since I'm using a sprite sheet. Then I'll set the pixel per unit to 16. Next, I'll set my filter mode to none and the compression mode to none as well. Then I'll click apply and open the sprite editor so I can slice my tiles. Once the sprite editor is open, click the slice button. Change the slice mode to slice by grid cell size and then set the size to 16 by 16. Click slice. Next, look at the sprites to make sure that everything is sliced properly. If it is, then click apply and close the sprite editor. Next, when we expand our sprite sheet, we'll see all of our individual tiles. Let's add these sprites to our tile palette. Click on the palette tab to view it again, then highlight all of the background sprites and drag them into your tile palette window. This will prompt you to select a location to save the tile data. Select the tile palette folder in the sprites folder and click save. Your sprites should now all be visible in the tile palette. The controls of the palette are very similar to moving around in the scene view. To zoom in or out, you can use the mouse scroll wheel. And to move around, you can right click and drag your mouse. Once you're comfortable moving around and viewing your tiles in the palette, pause the video and take a moment to get accustomed to how the sprites are laid out in the palette. This is going to make it a lot easier for you when you're putting together your level. When you're ready, unpause the video and we'll keep going. Before we jump right into adding our level to our scene, let's go over the tools that you will use to create your level. First, you have your paintbrush. The paintbrush allows you to paint into your scene view on your tile map. Next, you've got the box tool. This will make it much easier to fill in large spaces. Next to that, we have our eyedropper tool. This tool lets you quickly select tiles that you've already painted into your scene. Then we have our eraser. The eraser lets you remove tiles that you've painted into your level. It works a lot like the paintbrush tool, but instead of adding tiles to the tile map, it removes them. And lastly, we have the paint bucket tool. This tool lets you fill in large areas like the box tool, but these areas don't have to be square. 
This is useful when you've already defined the bounds and just want to color the inside of it quickly. Pause the video here and take a few moments to use each of the tools and get used to using them on the tile map. When you're ready to continue, we'll get started on implementing our level. Now let's take a look at the player. Double click on your player in the hierarchy to view them. Now, let's put a tile near them. The player is so tiny compared to these tiles, so let's resize our player. Set the player scale to be two on the X, Y, and Z. That looks much better. Next, let's define the bounds of my farm. With the background tile map selected in the hierarchy, I'll paint a rectangle using a grass color to be about the size that I want my farm. I'm just gonna do the outline of the left half first and fill in the rest with the paint bucket. And on the right side, I'll use my box tool since I already know the dimensions that I want. Perfect! Now that we have our background completed, we can draw our terrain on the ground layer. Pause the video here and draw in your level into the scene. Once you've finished, hit play and we'll add a house for the player and set up collisions on our terrain. I won't be adding any trees or rocks in this version, as I'm going to be covering those in a future video when we talk about collecting resources from the world. Now that our level is set up, we are ready to add a house sprite to the scene for our player. We will need to import the sprite for the house. So let's go to our sprite folders and right click and import a new asset. Navigate to your building sprite sheet and select it. Click import and your sprite will be loaded into the engine. Next, we need to set up the settings for our sprite sheet. Set our pixels per unit to 16. Change the sprite type to multiple, then change the filter mode to none and the compression to none as well. Let's apply our changes. Next, we'll need to slice our sprites from our sprite sheet using our sprite editor. This time, we will slice the sprite sheet automatically. Click slice and take a look at your sprites. You'll notice that it sliced some sprites out exactly and others not very well. So we're going to need to slice the messed up ones out by hand. To manually slice, we're going to need to click and drag. A green square will appear over the area that you are slicing. Then, if you need to, you can adjust the size once you've made a slice by dragging the edges or corners of the slice. Let's fix all the messed up slices on the sprite sheet, and once you're done, click apply. With that done, we can add our house to the scene. Expand the building sprite so that you can see all of the sprites. Feel free to use any building you'd like. I'm going to use the first building that has the springtime coloring. Drag the sprite into the scene and position it where you would like. Next, let's add a collider to our house. I'm going to add a polygon collider 2D so that the collider will be the same shape as the house. Great! The collider is a bit off though and I'd like the player to be able to run up to the door. Currently, if we play, you'll see that when I run up to the house, I stop pretty far from it. You'll also notice that we rotate when we clip the edge of the collider. We don't want this, so let's make some adjustments. First, let's adjust the settings on the player. Let's start by adjusting the sort order of our player since the house appeared over top of them. Set the player sort order to 3 and the house sort order to 2. Click on the player in the hierarchy and find the rigid body. Then, we need to adjust the constraints. Let's make it so that our player can't rotate on the Z axis. Great! Next, let's adjust the collider on the house so that we can run closer to the house before hitting the collider. With the collider adjusted, let's hit play and test it out again. This looks a lot better, but we do have another weird effect happening with our player. When our player runs into the collider, there's a little bit of jitter happening. This is because we are moving our character before we calculate collisions, so the player is actually moving through the collider a little bit, then the collider is pushing the player back out of it. We can fix this by changing when we move our character. Open the movement script. We are currently moving and getting input from our player in the update function. Since the update function is called before our collisions are calculated, we need to change when we try to move our player. But we need to move our player once per frame. This poses a challenge, and we can solve this by using a different type of update function in Unity. There are actually three types of update functions in Unity. There is the regular update function, which we're currently using, then we also have the late update and the fixed update function. The late update is called after our regular update function, but still before our collisions are calculated. So we must use our fixed update function. Let's add the fixed update function underneath our update function. Then let's cut and paste our movement code into the late update function. This will give us an error because the movement code can no longer access the direction vector. Let's create a private vector3 variable called direction at the top of our class. Then we can delete the vector3 part in front of where we're setting the direction. This should solve all of our errors in the class. Save the script and head back to Unity. Let's test it out again. 
This time, there should be no jitter when we run against the collider. Next, let's set up the rest of the collisions in our level. In my level, I've added cliffs that the player should not be able to traverse. So I'm going to add colliders to them so that the player cannot move over them. I'm going to create a new game object called Terrain Colliders, and I'm going to make sure that its position is at 0, 0, 0. Then I'm going to create another empty game object as a child of the Terrain Colliders game object. Next, I'm going to add an Edge Collider component to this new game object. This will look like a small green line in your level. Let's edit the shape of the collider. Click the Edit button, and then hover your mouse over the ends of the line. A green square should appear underneath your mouse. Click it and drag the green square to move the end of the line. Let's drag it over to my cliffs. We can add more points to the line by clicking on it. This is going to add another point to the location that we clicked. I'm going to drag the collider around and add points until it matches my level geometry around the cliffs and edges of the map. Once you're done, you can test out your collisions. We have the same problem as we did with the house. I want my player to be able to run right up against the cliffs, but the colliders are currently preventing that. So I'm going to adjust the colliders again, moving them up so I can run closer to the cliffs before colliding with them. And we're pretty much done! Give yourself a pat on the back. You successfully designed and implemented your very own level. You've added a house as well as set up collisions on your map. In the next video, we'll be creating collectible items that get picked up when you collide with them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot and I will see you next time.